I'm Victoria Cash, and I want to invite you to a place called Lucky Land. Where you can play over a hundred social casino style games for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. So what are you waiting for? The best way to discover your luck is to spin. So go to LuckyLandSlots.com. That's LuckyLandSlots.com. And get lucky today. At LuckyLand. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. So. All right. This movie writer gave herself an A at writing the script. She wrote for this movie, yes. Ooh, was the movie written by a woman? Uh, two women, yes. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no. Two, two women wrote this. No, Heath, no, two Mormon women. Two, Promise? I would assume Mormon women wrote this, yeah. yes. No, oh, that's so sad. Now I'm sad. We're having a sad time. <laughs> now we're having a sad time. God awful movie, movie, movie. movie. Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by my BFF, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Girls Night! All right. Brat Summer. And we also have veteran masochist, Cara Santa Maria. Cara, welcome back. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I always like it when Kara does that for her intro because sometimes these are new episodes for people and they're just like, I like this movie podcast. Do they, they seem have to a be hostage? torturing a yes. they, they, they seem to have kidnapped a lady. <laughs> Somehow I can hear her blinking on the audio. Oh, oh the new listeners yeah. are thinking that? Really, it's the new listeners. Well, no, are. the old listeners know we've kidnapped <laughs> yeah. a lady. Every Every week that I'm on the show, there's like a new post. Like, what do you have on her? Yeah. Every week they're like, just release the pictures, Kara. They yeah. can't be that bad. You killed a guy. It's fine. We all killed a guy. It happens. So based on those pictures, you watched a movie with us. Kara, what movie are we going to be breaking down today? Okay. So it's called Pride and Prejudice, a latter day comedy. Get it? Hell yeah, it is. Latter it is day. none of those things. Because <laughs> of the Mormons. Yeah. So I've never read Pride and Prejudice, so I have no idea how faithful this is to the original plot, but it looks like the 2002 Delia's catalog, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure... <laughs> Did the characters all have the same names, at least, as the yeah. people in the book? Okay. A lot of Janes, yeah. So there's that going mm -hmm. for it, yeah. <laughs> Everyone is either named after the character in the book or, like, someone who read the Cliff's Notes making a joke about the book, uh, right? Okay. Like, so Not Darcy right. is Darcy, but sometimes other characters will just be named like Elizabeth England. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love 90s remakes of classic novels like Clueless. Okay, and I do. But... Your modern church is slightly more prude than the Regency era. <laughs> yeah. You will love this movie. And I do. Yeah. I love this movie. Of course movie. you did. It's of course you did. Pretty terrible. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best, being the worst at? I'm going to go with best worst teeth. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Where are you and going I feel with this? Like I feel like this is a perfect example of actual best worst. Like lots of times it's the worst worst really is what we're talking about. But almost every character in this movie had perfect teeth that didn't fit in their mouths. Yep. They were all straight. <laughs> yeah, a lot of but straight. But they had some chompers. Prominent teeth. Prominent teeth. Yeah. Everyone here went to the same guy as Osteen. Got their <laughs> yeah. gums peeled back. <laughs> yep. I will say that 90% of the ads that I got were for Oral-B. So they know their audience, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Highly dental. <laughs> okay, I was going to go with best worst ADR moment. Yeah. So it's, it's a tiny moment that doesn't matter. The main character, Elizabeth, meets a guy at a party. His name's Collins. And apparently the actor who plays Elizabeth never stood next to this actor who played Collins, and he is way bigger than she expected. <laughs> like, she's supposed to say, hello, Collins, or something like that, but she clearly 
<laughs> just turned around. And he was way too big. And she panicked. And she was like, hello, big, big. <laughs> You're too big. How do you fit in stuff? You're so big. And they had to ADR it so badly for her to be like, hello, Collins, today. Yeah. But you could see her be like, big, big. <laughs> what? And of course, I'm going to take the easy one here and I'm going to go with best worst adaptation. So for those of you unfamiliar, this is, of course, based on Pride and Prejudice, the message of which is that a woman can rise above her means. And this movie is not about that. (laughs) One might argue the message of this movie is uh, don't get too uppity. Something like that. Could be. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's it's unclear. Yeah, I really, feel like what the big takeaway is. I feel like the movie writer saw the title Pride and Prejudice did not read the book at all and was like, "Oh, yeah, Mormon, like we're into Pride and Prejudice. It's probably perfect. Yeah, we're big and we're proud of how white delights and we are. Though we got to make and this harder. <laughs> I'm going to make a movie about staying in my lane as a woman. It's Yes, horrible. that that is what the movie is about. Yeah. 100%. Feels like the I didn't read Jane Austen's book either, but it feels like the opposite of Plebeians, what it feels the like the opposite of what Jane Austen was saying, right? Eli, you've On read today's it? podcast. Yes, very much. I've read it, of course. Very smart. Have you? Mm-hmm. What? Yes. Really? Oh, yes, very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. read it multiple times. Did you like dozens. me? Dozens. Have you read it dozens yeah. of times? Probably <laughs> dozens now that you mention it. Probably, probably dozens. Cool. I probably read it dozens yeah. of times. <laughs> I know all the characters' names and the plot points. No need to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Got it. And you know the spark motifs, I'm sure, too. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely just looked up the summary, the TLDR on Britannica and Spark Notes, and I was like, okay, I got the general idea. You got it. And I didn't did even do that. Yeah, I figured you guys would do that. On <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to read up a little bit more while we take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about Pride and Prejudice, a latter-day comedy. Dude, you're going to wake her. You are. Shh. Heath, Eli, what did we say about hiding in my closet? Um, ah, kick, punch, punch, kick, 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 kick. No, I mean after. Oh, um, you said don't. Don't. Exactly. Now out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Kara. We didn't mean to. We were just hoping to up your wardrobe game with Quince. What's Quince? Quince has all the seasonal must-haves, like 100% European linen shirts from $30, performance polos, and versatile activewear. But the best part is, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Wow, how do they do that? By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. Me too. When Quince became a sponsor, they sent Anna a cool new skirt, and she loves it. She wears it all the time and gets a ton of compliments. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse Quince. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where can I check it out? Fill your closet with timeless pieces you'll be wearing for summers to come with Quince. Go to quince.com slash awful for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash awful to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash awful. Great. Thanks. All right. I uh, guess that means we can throw out these bell bottoms. What? I don't own bell bottoms. You do now. Heath tried to fit into your skinny jeans. Seriously? I have a turgid calf. He does. It's true. Chris. Chris, I got great news. The soda shop finally got caffeine-free boba? No, better. We got approved to make another movie, a remake of a classic English novel. Ooh, like Clueless. Yes, exactly like Clueless. And what was the message of Clueless? Uh, That a young woman can be more than her making? You know, like an Emma. What? No, no, it's the B words be crazy. I I don't think that's what that book's about. It totally is what it's about. I'll prove it to you. Hey, Kara. Kara, Kara Santa Maria. Hey, Mormon movie maker guys. What's up? Hey, Kara. So isn't the point of Clueless that B-words be crazy? See, I told you. Yeah. <sighs> right in the nards. Don't say nards. It's swearing. Sorry. Sorry. Looks like he'll be working with some caffeine free boba for a while. What? It's a callback you weren't in the room. 
little help? No. Hurts so bad. <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with the famous opening line from Jane Austen's book, <laughs> except they get it wrong right away. The first line of the book says, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. The movie starts with the narrator saying, a girl of a certain age and in a certain situation in life must be in want of a husband. So that's a fun Mormon start for the thing. Right. Yeah, a great reversal of everything about Pride and yeah. Prejudice, right? <laughs> Which, because again, Pride and Prejudice is about men in search of women, but this movie is a sexist version of that. So it's girls loving the boys. It might as well start with like, must be in want of a husband, Kara. Yeah. We oh. want <laughs> grandkids, Kara. Let's go. Tick tock. <laughs> yeah, I wrote, I guess I'm not very Mormon. <laughs> So it's funny because, right, does that mean then that Pride and Prejudice was, it was a commentary on... Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was turning it on its ear. And this is like, let's not do that. Yeah, and Pride and Prejudice is a wildly feminist work for its time. Right. Like, incredibly brave in the society it was written. So using this, I, I was trying to think of like a good analogy. It would be like if in the year 2100, white fragility was used as an example of like how oppressed white men were that they wrote. <laughs> they wrote mean books about them. Like it's, it's truly hard for my mind to grasp. Well, yeah. if, if it was like 2350, that would be about right. right. Like, yeah. <laughs> this movie is less progressive than a book from 1797 is what I'm saying. Well, yeah. What we're saying is it's very Mormon. Yeah. Mormon church right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But very importantly, very importantly, more than this stars, the various characters, because this is where we're going. Austin the Pug. Austin the Pug is introduced. Best character yes. in the movie. Yes. Austin the Pug is in this movie. Just so you know, podcast listener, there will be entire scenes where Heath and Kara will have to provide all your commentary because my notes are quite literally Pug, Austin, he named Austin, Boo, move the camera <laughs> back to Austin. Austin's kind of cute. I'll give you that. I don't, I'm not a pug person. I know. I know. Eli and wow, I. Wow, Eli is Kara, you cut out. You cut out and you <laughs> fucked yourself to death yeah. is what you did. <laughs> Mostly because it's cruel. You know, these poor dogs that can't give birth on their own. And have All right, we're going to take a quick break for Eli to cry. <laughs> take a quick break. Can we have, a, have another interstitial? What was the last interstitial? We need another one. <laughs> I will give you this though. Like, or maybe you know, is it a toy pug or is it just a puppy? That's just a puppy. Pugs are it's, toy pugs. Right, but this is a really small pug. He's so. a puppy. It's a puppy. And he's, pug, very, yeah. he's very cute. He's very cute. Very cute. So yeah, this is where we're going to meet the main cast. This is ja Jane is who we're going to be introduced to first. We are also introduced to the fact that she is Argentinian. Yeah, like they needed to call, they're like Jane. <laughs> The Argentinian. Let's very odd. Yeah, very <laughs> Very, a, a very odd thing. Also, they go over the two sisters. I mean, it's really hard to say. I don't think the two sisters and Pride and Prejudice are supposed to be quite as villainous as the other extra characters in this movie are. They're sort of like the catty roommates who are constantly trying to steal her various love interests in the movie, but that, that is not how they are in the book. They're supposed to be sisters? Yeah, in the in the book their sisters, yeah. I guess I miss that. Okay, and to be clear, only one of them is horrible. The other one is hapless. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like the being... horrible girl who's horrible to her sister too, and then just like the hapless girl with like a weird crooked mouth. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then of course, there's the nerdy girl. I will say, let's give uh, Mormon cinema the credit where it's due. She does not get a makeover at a certain point in this movie and then become worthy as a human being. She actually gets to stay the nerdy girl. So, you know, a step up on all the romantic comedies of the 1990s there. And she's not even that nerdy. She's like, so not She's just nerdy. a perfectly normal looking girl. It's just the rest of them, again, look like they're in a Delia's catalog. Yeah, exactly. She reads a book once, so she's like a problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, the rest yeah, yeah. Of them, yeah. And the main character is like, I don't know, she's like a Mandy Moore dupe. Exactly. Yeah. And she wants to be a great writer. <laughs> right. <laughs> just like Jane Austen, who is public domain. It's public domain. <laughs> you're allowed to Dibs. do stuff with that. So now we're going to watch her do her morning routine. She works at White Knight Books. <laughs> huh? This is because of the, the white horse prophecy or something like that, right? I 
Well, and also just the white knight, like the white the knight racism the of Mormonism yeah, in general. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh no! I, I didn't no, think it was a, a Mormon racist reference. I just thought it was like a, a man on his yeah, just yeah, a classic. sexism with with a touch of racism. Yeah, oh, it's hard okay. to tell. The, this the was two... like she's waiting for her white knight to come save her. Exactly. From her. Yeah. Ah, right. She, was, she wants her MRS it. degree. That's literally what they call it when they're in mm-hmm. college and yep. the girls are trying to get married. Wait, seriously? Oh yeah, the MRS. Yeah, the degree. guys go off on missions, and the girls are waiting for the return missionaries to come back, all like horny and ready to get married. Rough. Because they're you know trying to not have sex before they get married. And yeah, they literally call it their MRS degree because so many girls only go to college. They might get a degree, but they never use it. Right. Or they drop out before they finish their degree because they got married. That's all they really wanted. It's fucking God, gross. Mormonism it's- is the opposite of Jane Austen. And they make yeah. a movie about this book. That's the point. But we're also establishing in this montage here that she's wacky because she puts fries on her burger. She also goes to the library during this montage and all the books are color-coded at the library, which I found <laughs> very strange. The choice, the set design is a choice. It's for the gram. It's for yeah. the gram, Kara. <laughs> and then she heads off to her job at the bookstore. Yes, she works in a bookstore because she's the protagonist in a romantic comedy. Now, this is where we're going to be introduced to the pink Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. The pink Bible is... I, I I don't know what the corollary is supposed to be, but basically all the women in this book, the bad ones or the, the sinful ones, have read this book that's like how to get a man. And it's the only book they sell at the bookstore. And it's got all the wrong read sinful advice for how to attract a boy in it. So we watch her like reading it a little. And the two evil sisters that we mentioned the opening, they are going to either be reading from it or sometimes narrating from it at various points of the movie. So she's stacking books when she runs into the one, the only English heartthrob. But he's not because she doesn't like him. Okay. (laughs) So, So this is great, right? Because this is Mr. Darcy. Now, For those of you who have read the Jane Austen books, Mr. Darcy's not handsome. That's why he's played by Colin fucking Firth, right? He's supposed to be kind of a frumpy guy who's a little bit rude and doesn't really get the whole social bullshit of the Regency era. So they found this fucking male model... And to recreate the initial meeting with Darcy that goes off kind of uh, weirdly in the Jane Austen book, he's just going to treat her as an employee like absolute shit. Yeah, because he's British, you know, so he's like pompous. Right. Is this, wait, I'm just realizing, is this the plot of Bridget Jones's diary? Yes, which is yeah. also, <laughs> based also based on, on Pride, Pride and Prejudice. Prejudice. Yeah. No, okay, okay, it's all coming together for me. All right. Finally, a work of art we can relate to, yes. am I right? <laughs> yes, Can we go back for a second, Eli, to the Pink Bible? Because yes. this is like, isn't this kind of like the game, but for women and yes, in reverse? Yes, that's it's like, I think yeah. what it's supposed to be. But yeah. like, so that they can exploit themselves. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because they want to land a man. That's like the whole thing is like how to get a man. Yeah. But it's all just catering to like man things. Yes. Whereas like the game is like how to get a woman by catering to man things. Yes. Exactly. The two <laughs> sides just of the dating sure. spectrum. Yes. What okay. men want and what men want. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sounds I like get it. it. But, but it. yeah, he's very rude to her here. He's looking, I love this because again, like Darcy's supposed to be smart, but brusque, but this guy's a fucking idiot. He's looking in the wrong section for a book and he's like, I'm actually looking for Kierkegaard. And she's like, I'm very versed in Kierkegaard. <laughs> and I wanted so badly for them to just have like a really long argument about fear and trembling, but literally Googling Kierkegaard and like how to say the name out loud was as far as this movie could go. <laughs> Well, no, I thought that there was a little depth there because they're like going to reference existentialism as some sort of counterpoint to Mormonism, but they can't go too far. So they have right. to pick like the Christian existentialism. Right. They can't actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. They, the closest they can get to existentialism is the guy who woke up having a panic attack because his religion makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. But so she she sends him to the right section. Right. Because he's in the gardening section where yeah. there are books by... Apparently, Mark Twain and Dr. Phil. 
Well, the idea there is that she has misshelved the books and he's calling her on it. Oh, God. You always read these films with so much more depth than I do. Kara, you know how when you get emails complaining about you to Skeptic's Guide, you're always like, is this a mute cute right now? Like, am I <laughs> extremely attracted to this emailer? That's what this movie is recreating. That's what it is. Keith, you got anything to add? I do not. <laughs> <I'm just> not. <laughs> okay. But then, as he's about to leave, he totally narks on her to her boss. Yeah, he's a yeah. dick. In he's this a dick. Scene. So but again, she's also kind of awful at this point. I don't like anybody yet. Yes, no one in this movie is likable or ever will be like. <laughs> okay, but this guy is supposed to turn into the good guy. That's what happens in the book, anyway. If yeah, like, yeah. but he's the worst forever now. He's just a giant dick. No, he turns into the good guy. So like, there's no redeeming this character. Well, but that's the whole point. He's not supposed to be redeemable, and then he is. And then the bad guy. <laughs> now that she knows it's Bridget Jones. Yeah. Yeah, now she's I get got, it, right? She's fucking on lock. Get to, get <laughs> yeah. fucking in order. He's... And then and then the guy who seems to be the good guy turns out to be a piece of shit. Yeah. He's just charming. Yeah. So now we check back into the girl's apartment. This is where we see them practicing the things from the pink Bible. Uh, apparently they have five finger death punch instructions for... The elbow oh, to give yeah. him a boner? Well, no, the old sexy elbow trick. Yeah, that's I I know about that. <laughs> what? That's a yeah. that's a thing. Did you catch this part? <laughs> no, I missed it. I was too focused on this other thing that you guys probably missed, where they're all looking in the mirror, like getting ready. Yeah. And one of the girl at this point, they don't have names to me yet because I don't know them. So one is Mask and Curlers girl, which I think is Lydia. Yeah. Yeah. She's like getting ready in the mirror, and she has this like wand, and she's poking herself in the eye with it. Mm -hmm. What was that? That is not... I figured you guys just overlooked it because you're like, that's a beauty ritual. I do not understand. Genuinely, Thank I was you, like, Kara, there's uh, probably an eye poke girl stick. Probably, there's, there's a no thing for thing that, right? There's I could no walk thing upstairs like that. and see my wife doing to her face that I wouldn't be like, I got that's part of it. Right? <laughs> she could be peeling the flesh cleanly yeah. away and laying it over the Joker's face for his next crime spree. And I'd be like, oh, cool, the Joker's here. Is I bet that was expensive. <laughs> I actually saw like an Instagram video of a girl peeling like glue off her of skin her off face. and putting yeah, it and onto the joker. Her, <laughs> no, and telling her boyfriend that she was like molting that all girls do that. And he was like mortified and totally bought it because guys are fucking idiots. A hundred percent. But yeah, this, I don't know what the fuck she's doing. I think she's like separating her eyelashes with a knitting needle, which makes no sense. Yeah, if this was a joke intended for people who understand beauty rituals, it was definitely lost on me. It was lost on everybody. <laughs> yeah, it made no sense. But the point of this scene is that Argentinian girl, who, by the way, is from Argentina, <laughs> she got a, a letter from a publisher because she's been submitting the protagonist's book to publishers behind her back <laughs> and against her wishes. Like best friends do. Yeah. Yeah. We learned that her book was a Napoleonic techno fantasy Apparently. The world's only yeah. Napoleonic techno this fantasy. Feels hard. Yeah. Feels hard to make one of those. Okay. This felt like a real life thing. Like the writer of this movie in real <laughs> life is trying so hard to publish. To get their Napoleonic, Napoleonic techno, techno fantasy. fantasy going, trying to make yeah. that I be think a you're thing. Right. Yeah. There are a lot of real life things that like only Mormons would know. Like they reference somebody named so-and-so Rasmussen, which is such a Mormon name. Oh, yeah. There were at least like five in my ward when I was growing up. But she says no, and she gets rejected anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. There's like all this buildup where she's like, oh, let me read it to you. And I'm like, that's so rude. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's very strange. I would at least check before I First. did it as like a housewide announcement. Well, she learns that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's time for them to go to the party. Which party? It does not matter. This movie will be a series of parties until its very last scene. It very much feels like a public party, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a <laughs> like a city block party, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's like a rich person's house. Yeah, it's supposed to be. So we cut over to the party, and there we're going to meet our love interest for now, Jack something Charles. Charles. Oh, for, no, yeah. First, we meet Charles. We don't meet Jack yet. Oh, that's right. We meet yeah. Charles first. Yes. Charles Char is guy in pearl snap shirt. If you're reading yeah. my notes. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I put hello teeth. I mean Charles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so this is the first of many teeth. Yeah. 
The first of many. Yeah. And he says that his mom, this is how he's introduced. He goes, my mom's writing an article about Jewish women. She, I w- told her she should call it Shebrew. And I just want to say, Shebrew is a great pun, Charles. <laughs> Would you like to be on our podcast? You could be the tall one, Charles. Listen up. I was confused at this point because he 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 did utter the phrase Jewish Jewish feminist movement. The Jewish feminist movement is what the article his mom was writing. Yeah. But you learn like along the way that this guy is very dim. <laughs> I yeah. Guess, I guess it's a good way. He's like the cute hot guy, right? Who like is dumb and hot and hapless and... And good, right? And good. I think he's supposed, think he's supposed to be, to be very There's pure. There's also one yeah. of those who's not good. It's uh, interesting characters. <laughs> yeah, they're very complex. Yeah. There's three varieties of men. Good and hot, bad and hot and ugly. Yeah, this is like pretty close to life. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be too mad at the that. The Cara Santa Maria story. <laughs> the all women who ever existed story. Um, so Collins we meet next. Yes. Collins is bad ugly. Yes. Collins is bad because he is ugly. No, Collins is bad because he's a fucking predator. Oh, he is. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So in this scene, we are introduced to him like he's creepy just because he like cares about her interests and brought her a gift, but he will become violently predatory and homicidal later. I wanted yes. to go back and like redact all my notes defending Collins. Yeah, no, Collins is not okay. But in this scene, he's just sort of like a hapless nerd. Yeah, he's like a big, tall, oafy guy. He reminds me of um, who's he playing the serial killer in M- Mindhunter? Mm, really? You sure. guys didn't watch Mindhunter? My friend is in Mindhunter. No, I saw, I think I watched this, the first season, but not. Yeah. He's the shoe guy. The the really the your friends in Mindhunter? Yeah, he's the shoe guy. Is it son of Sam? No, it's Ed Kemper. He's playing yes, Ed Kemper. Yes, Ed Kemper. Yeah, he's it got feels, real he's Ed, got Ed Kemper, Kemper vibes, vibes for yes. sure. But if he w- if he went by Eddie, that's what yeah. we've got here. Eddie <laughs> yeah. Eddie Kemper vibes. Yeah. He also gives her an article from 1978. I went down a rabbit hole on this Kara. Are you aware of 1978? I know of it. It was 5 years before I was born. The though. year? <gasps> No, the ladies' magazine. Oh. The response to those sinful rags like Cosmopolitan and Vogue. Is it Mormon? Yeah, it's Mormon Uh, and it's like a biblical ladies' magazine. That means they sell it at the Deseret bookstore. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) It's the opposite of the Pink Bible. Yes, exactly. Except not really because the Pink Bible is, I think, still supposed to be Mormon. Yeah, I think everything's supposed to be within the scope of Mormon, but Mm -hmm. this is like Mormon, Mormon, yeah. But if it's so Mormon, why would it have the phrase, a virtuous woman never hides her bushels? They all giggled too. They get it. What did that mean? Oh, come on. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Oh. What? I thought it was like, I thought it was like your No, book. it's supposed to be a don't it's a hide joke your about your bush. Mons right? pubis. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's a it's, your mons pubis thing. <laughs> the movie is making a show us your hairy bush joke, but yeah. I think the magazine is supposed to be doing the hide your light it under a bushel. But that was like, I was kind of like, okay, what movie is, are these like yeah. ex-Mormons making a movie about Mormonism? I had a moment and then it went away. <laughs> Fun fact, this scene, the 1978 magazine and the two nerds talking about the track. Kara, did you ever go on the track? Mm-mm. God damn it. I, I left so when I was 15. You went, yeah, you got out too early to yeah. go on the track. Again, for the listeners at home who aren't aware, the track is a, I don't want to say summer camp, pilgrimage uh, slash I see what torture. you did there with pilgrims. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. yeah. Where they send the kids to go on the same journey as the Mormons went across the country. Ooh, do they eat people too when they get stranded? They don't uh, resort uh. to cannibalism and, <laughs> oh, you know, take on multiple wives, unfortunately. Do they do the wooden submarine at all? or uh, So not the ancient Mormons, the like Boo. 19... No, the, yeah, the pioneers. Yeah, the pioneer, the pioneer Mormons. Pioneer. Yeah, the yeah. ones who got kicked out and spent time in jail for the crimes that they did. Those. Oh, so you just go across the country doing treason. Yes, and exactly. Murder. Yeah, and, and just like modern Mordens. And cannibalism. Yeah, exactly. And, and a little <laughs> bit of cannibalism. But they're talking about this. These two scenes, the 1978 scene and the them talking about the Trek scene that we get here in this party scene are cut from the free versions of the movie that you find on Tubi because they wanted to make it more mainstream. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little too esoteric there. Uh, I don't get that Collins, also a very Mormon name. We definitely had a Collins, first name Collins, plural, oh, for sure. in our ward. Collins, a.k.a. Ed Kemper. He thinks somehow that he's better than the nerd girl. 
Like he's he's like the definition in this scene of like oh to have the confidence of a mediocre, of a mediocre white man. White man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, like he's, truly. Like he's hitting on like the hot main character. She's like, dude, I'm not into you. The nerd girl sitting there all like demure and coy and he's literally like disgusted by her. Well, and she's <laughs> interested in the stuff he's interested exactly. in. He's and like, she's pretty and, yeah. inter- and like fine. Well, no, she just Kara, wears long sleeves. Yeah, like, Kara, that's she's, she's not she's pretty. She wears glasses. Right. Pay attention. And she reads <laughs> books. Yeah. Yeah. But also Yuck. they should probably be somewhat, they should have continuity here because the main character also wears glasses from half the movie and different. Reads books. They're different. not nerd. They're glasses, so different. clearly the couple that's supposed to end up together though. Like they're, they're yes. they, and they do. dumb love polygon. Like they might as well be shaped like lockets that smash into <laughs> each other. <laughs> two puzzle pieces just ma- two magnets just massively resisting each other as the movie continues. And yet still the guy's like but I'm better than you because I got dick. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Gross. And then Jack. Oh my yes. God, Jack. Can we talk about Jack? He yes. looks like he got the Matt Gates special. Mm. Like Jack has some intense features. Yeah. yeah, a lot of teeth again. A lot of teeth. Yeah, I call him Paul Ruddy in my notes. <laughs> I, okay, okay. I think Paul Ruddy, it's kind of giving him too Paul big Rudd's of a compliment. pretty mad about this as he's listening yeah. to our podcast. Yeah. Paul Rudyard Kipling? I, <laughs> I called him young, um, oh fuck, what's his name? You know, the pirate rapist. Johnny Depp? Yeah. Wife beater, the pirate wife beater. Yes, young Johnny Depp, Neil Gaiman. Yeah, I, he looked like young Johnny Depp. He looked like Johnny Depp in Cry Baby. Ooh, I see that. I see that. But yeah, he is a big fan of our protagonist. They have a scene where they play pool, and he asks her to go to Vegas and marry him, and she says no. So we're gonna pass over that. Oh yeah, that was weird. They get all the pool wrong. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So they get all I, the pool right because I don't. I was mad. Is it literally just there to enrage uh, Heath and right? Oh, they're also playing it in a black void. Yeah. Did you guys notice that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just a pool. They're lit. They play pool inside a doodly do and then don't acknowledge <laughs> yeah, it at weird. all and move on. Yeah. Oh, and my favorite line from the book here, she's talking about the pink Bible and he's like, oh, I've read it. And she's like, really? And he's like, yeah, dozens, plural, of times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Who has exactly. read a book dozens, plural, of times? Eli's read okay. Pride and Prejudice dozens of times. 24 <laughs> times. Eli has read Pride and Prejudice. There are definitely, I will say this, there are definitely books I have read 24 times. No, there are not, Eli. 100%. Eli. There are, bo- there are books that I have read significantly more than 24 times, <gasps> and I would like to move on, Senator. Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Eli's mom is a Lee Bennett Hopkins Award winner? Ooh. Kara will care about that. She's not a plebeian like you. But more than 20, I'm I'm stuck on 24 times. I don't want to talk about it. Eli, have you talked to your therapist about this? No, I don't talk to my therapist. (laughs) Every time he does, with your arms crossed. Yeah. (laughs) Every time I say something to him, he writes it down and he goes, well, that's pretty important. So yeah, (laughs) that's why there's better help. All right. (laughs) So now we head back to the party. Uh, It's time for some shenanigans. The two mean sisters are going to cut the music because the party is going too well. And if the party goes too well, Charlie and Jack will choose other women. Yeah, the the mean one. What's her name again? Lydia. Mm -hmm. She has a Leatherman in her sequin butterfly purse. She's got a multi-tool. I do like that. Weirdest thing ever. This this made me warm on Lydia and Kitty, who are (laughs) supposed to be the bad characters. But by the end of this, I was like, I think they're the only ones I like in this movie. What does that say about you, Heath? I like a Leatherman carrying lady. Okay, so Lydia is by far the most atrocious character in this entire film. But why are we lumping Lydia together with Electrocuted Girl? That's true. Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. She is just a victim in all of this. She's like hapless and sweet. She really is. She just constantly is victimized by this movie. And she is also the youngest of all of them. Yes, but I do have to point out that Lydia is actually the best character in the movie because she is the one who owns the pug. So, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Different opinions. But Take she, your own. She almost kills her sister. She does. This is mm-hmm. where she almost kills her sister. Her sister attempts to cut, I think it's the main power to the house with the multi tool. Yeah. Cutting a wire. Just unplug, though. It's the wire to like the band's amp, right? Yes. Yeah. Just unplug it. Just it's also like it. in every movie ever where there's like a bomb that they have to diffuse, they sit there and stress and sweat over which wire to cut. In this one, she's like, cut the wire. There's like 70 wires. And yep. she's like, I'll just cut this one. No hesitation. And then almost dies. Yeah. She gets comedy electrocuted, which I got to say is a thing I do miss 
from mainstream cinema where a person would do a thing that absolutely 100% would kill them, but we know they're not dead because their hair just sticks out all funny after it happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, we also check in on Darcy again. This is Charlie. Charlie is checking the power in the garage because, again, the the shenanigans happened. And Darcy's in there reading because he's an intellectual. Yeah, he's in a he's in a convertible parked in the garage. I thought it was like it was like a suicide scene. It it felt like he walked in on that. Yes, that was weird. I wasn't jerking off. I was just reading, reading this manuscript. Yeah, he's reading a manuscript in a three ring binder. Yeah. Okay. So that will pay off later in the movie. Right now, I see. But for this point in the movie, I was like, dude, what the fuck are you reading? (laughs) I bought a script for Reservoir Dogs from a guy on 42nd and (laughs) 7th. Really brushing up on my literature. This is also where he says that all the women in the party are too stupid to talk to. And I have a hot take here. I've literally never spoken to a man who talked to me about how stupid women were who wasn't the dumbest fucking douche I've ever met. Like, that guy's next words are always ice bath. Like, 100% (laughs) of the time. Yeah, and this is the first time, but not the last, that I wrote in my notes. I feel like Jane Austen would prefer this movie had not been made. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Although, she didn't know what movies were. Right. (laughs) Okay. So now we cut back to the party. Uh, nerdy girl, because the speaker is cut, Nerdy Girl goes up and sings a song and everyone makes fun of her. Yeah, sadly, Mary the stereotype is a legit Mormon stereotype. Yeah. We all had one Mary in our ward. Right, exactly. But, but the plot works because now we cut to Lydia and Lydia has bumped into, is this Jack or Charlie? They're identical. It's so hard to tell. Oh, at first, Lydia, yeah, Lydia's going after Charlie. Yes. Right. Lydia basically wants to steal Charlie from Argentinian Jane. Yes, exactly. And she stages a meet cute here based on Mm -hmm. like the pink Bible strategy, I guess. It's got a diagram and everything. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is like, do that bump into thing and, you know, you drop all your books or whatever. So she like stages that. Mm -hmm. But Charlie doesn't react to it at all. He's about to leave. And then she's like, fuck, okay, plan B. She does the, the old sexy elbow trick for a second. And it. What's the elbow sort of, trick? It's, uh, That's what they teased earlier in the movie the five yeah, finger what, death punch of elbows. What is it though? It's like wrist control, but elbow. And it's. Yeah, sexy. I think you're supposed to, like, when you squeeze a guy's elbow, it's supposed to win him over, is what the book is claiming. Uh... <laughs> I figured as a doctor, you would know about this. This is a common medical <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, phenomenon. They didn't teach me that. In, no, they teach you in dentistry school. No. All right, well. And, you know, PhD If someone's school. ever dying and they seem like they could use some arousal. The old funny bone. Pretty sure that <laughs> violates every ethical principle. No, you're not principle. supposed to and, squeeze no. the elbows. <laughs> no. um, of your clients. We also meet here intense eyes blonde lady with pearls around her neck. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Other evil yeah. white lady. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, they really needed to limit their choice down of evil white ladies in this yeah. film. There are quite literally, I'm not joking, three different villainous women who will introduce at various points throughout the movie confusions that will make the protagonist upset. Mm-hmm. And they are identical, <laughs> except that this one always wears pearls and her hair up. This one's Caroline. Yes. Caroline scares me. She has like these eyes that pierce through your soul. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty scary. She's good casting. Okay. But now we're going to meet, I think, my favorite character in the movie other than Austin the Pug. So we we cut back to Mary singing on the stage because the band stopped. Because the the power's out. Mm -hmm. And she's singing and everybody's just silently watching her sing. That's weird. Like my, my Bonnie lives over the ocean. Weird thing. And then one guy in the background <laughs> through the silence is like, you suck. Therefore, yep. this party sucks. <laughs> yep. My favorite line exact in cinema. Yes, he uses words, therefore. Yes, including yes. therefore yep. <laughs> during yep. his yell. I had to pause. I laughed a lot at this yep. moment. I definitely felt like I was watching Empire Records at this point. <laughs> so equivalent to Empire Records, this film. And I, th- I think we need heckling narrator guy everywhere, right? That's just like a fun... 100%. Fun yes, we need him in every movie. Absolutely. So now we cut back to Colin and Darcy. Uh, this is where Darcy sees Jack for the first time. And Jack's like, oh, hey, Darcy. And Darcy's like, fuck off right now. And he's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. whatever. I wanted to leave. To establish that they have 
a history. Yeah, I wrote, okay, so Jack and Darcy have beef. (laughs) I wrote, please be gay lovers. Please be gay lovers. Please be gay lovers. Yeah, but you wrote, you read the book dozens, plural of times. So you know, I didn't read this book dozens of times. Yes, you did. Don't lie. Don't lie. (laughs) God. Have you, and and Darcy, let's, I want to point out here, have you ever seen a college aged boy, which clearly he's not? He's like 42 years old playing a college aged boy. But have you ever seen a college aged boy at a rager wearing a blazer? Okay. Sometimes blazers are Kara, a snappy thank you, Heath. thing. I feel like and there's you, about to be you unity. A so get, thank you. You wore blazers when you were 19. I the first no, night I've, of college, I, one. I went out with my roommates, <laughs> and I might have worn a sports jacket. Of course you did, Eli. <laughs> and it went not great. It went swimmingly. So I probably went home and read that book for a 26th time. <laughs> Everybody's just Got handing you keys the whole time. Got You're like, I'm not the valet. Right, I'm not the valet. Ah, I don't work here. I mean, I will clear your glasses, but duh. <laughs> but yeah, they they hint at that they have a history. We all wrote that they used to fuck every yeah. single one of us. That's what it seemed so, like. Wish yeah, because the scene, he's like, my name's Darcy. Oh, his name. Oh, she's asking Jack about him because she's like, oh, you know that dick? He's such a dick, right? And he's like, his name's Darcy. We uh totally um in the past have a history is had. like almost exact words. Yeah, we have a disagreement about a girl, and then he's like, "Yeah, about a girl, yeah, a girl." Which, by the way, like spoilers, we, we'll talk about what their actual disagreement is. That is not how you would phrase their situation in any way about a girl. Yeah, right. About it's my, be- my, my sister. sister. Yeah. Yep. Oh wait, but it was Jack talking. So it is how he would say it. Mm, okay, well, maybe. everyone in this movie is going to talk past each other to like set <laughs> right, up stupid true. plots. So now the movie's talking past the audience to go along with that theme, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we get get a scene where Argentinian girl is in love with Charlie. I don't know what happened in this scene because the pug is in the scene. So my notes are <clears throat> in order. Pug, pug. <laughs> yes, go over there and say hi to the pug. Please go to the pug in the movie. I ask so little of you. So yeah, it's, uh, she's in love with Charlie. That's all you need to know. We made it pretty far into... How far would you say we are into the movie at this point? Uh, almost exactly a third. Okay, because we made it pretty far before like my notes start to descend a little bit into madness. Yeah. Like this is where the first time I wrote, I legit don't care about anything anyone is doing or talking about, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. usually happens much earlier. So I didn't write that. I thought that though. I wrote, <laughs> Pug has a bottle. He bottle. <laughs> so bottle. this baby pug is being fed like pug baby formula from a little <laughs> bottle. It's the best. Yes, it's the best. How could you not love it? So now we cut to the next day. The boys are playing tennis. This is Charlie and Darcy playing tennis while the girls basically just update us on what has happened in the movie so far. Right. Just like Jane Austen intended. The, just like Jane the women Austen characters, intended. They brought lemonade to like lady watch the man sporting and they're just sitting on the sidelines of this tennis. Yeah, this right. is the sisters, right? They're watching them and the, yeah. and the bad sister is like got googly eyes over Charlie. Right. And Caroline is also there. This oh, is, Caroline's This is where we get Caroline's name. That's Pearl Necklace, who was scary in the last scene and will be scary in future scenes. Yeah, she's wearing pearls in her tennis costume. They manage, I think they managed to fail the Bechdel test in this book slash movie by Jane Austen. I know. So many. Where 99% of the dialogue is between women. They failed the mm, Somehow they did. They really, they really nail. Is there like a murdering, the, is there an anti-Bechdel test, right? The Matt Powell test that they're, <laughs> that they're actually passing with flying colors. But the whole point of this scene is that at the end, Darcy is one and he says, oh, I could give you a tennis lesson. And she's like, you don't remember, you were rude to me. And he's like, oh, we have sexual tension because it's the 90s and treating each other poorly established sexual tension in the 90s. You're talking about Elizabeth, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she's like, F you, I'm going home. Also, she's all sweaty and disheveled and that's like hot to Darcy. Yeah. Whereas the girls who are all made up and trying to be pretty do not catch their attention. Oh, I didn't catch. That's actually Mm -hmm. redeeming him a little bit here. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice. (laughs) Darcy's actually, they, I think they, they make him a relatively good character. They eventually. He's got a chip on his shoulder uh, at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning when he's in the bookstore, he has a chip on his shoulder because rightly so, living in fucking Provo or or Salt Lake or wherever they are, he's like, what is with all the women in this town? So when he's at the bookstore and he's trying to have an interesting conversation with somebody, he's like pissy about it. Because mm, right. he's like, Mormon women just constantly are talking about how much they want to get married. Interesting. Hmm. 
Okay. All right. Okay. That's how I read him. Like, he's only shitty for one scene. He and is. Then the he, rest they just of give the him movie, the one scene of yeah, shittiness. Yeah. And the he's rest really of the nice. movie, he's trying to make up for it, which is it, which is very similar to the novel. Who is he in Bridget Jones' diary? Colin Firth. He's Colin Firth, who's awkward and and sh- cold and delightful, and with somebody else. And later, it turns Colin out to Firth be delightful. Was also, yeah. the was Darcy in the and then what's the his BBC name? Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant is Jack. Is Jack yeah. for sure? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. for everybody listening, just superimpose those characters. For everyone who wants to attune to the real work of literature. I've seen that movie dozens of times. So yeah. this is helping. There you go. See? And Bridget Jones is Elizabeth. Yeah. And none of the other female characters are in Bridget <laughs> Jones' diary. For the younger members of the audience, Bridget Jones' diary is a remake of Pride and Prejudice where the 126-pound Renee Zellweger <laughs> yeah. is supposed to be, their words not mine, mega fat. Yep. 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 It's a real yikes a Yikes, indeed. Also, Caroline is in the movie. Yeah. Because Caroline is Colin Firth's fiance. Yes. In the film. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. yep Correct. Yep. Can we just switch to Bridget Jones' diary? <laughs> <and> <laughs> guys, <laughs> what? In, in the 2002. <laughs> no, it's like, I'm gone for one week. You switch <laughs> now, movies. You just did a positive point. review of Bridget Jones' <laughs> <laughs> diary for two Damn it, of the I episode. gave you all one job. But yeah, now it's time for us to really hate Collins, right? So Collins is going to show up with some flowers. Oh, And his proposal speech begins with, I'm willing to overlook the things about you I hate. I wrote in my notes the Anna Bosnick story. And then he says, I know it's tiny, but... So I wrote the Eli Bosnick story. And then he says, sometimes when a girl says no, she means yes. And I wrote the Neil Gaiman story. (laughs) Yes. He says, mom says that sometimes when a girl... He goes there with flowers and says, will you marry me? Which, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I'm not going to marry you. And he's like, why? You've been flirting with me for weeks. And she's like, I've been nice to you because I feel sorry for you. And then he's like, "Some mom says sometimes when a girl says no, she means yes. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, not great. Yeah. And it gets worse. She's like, no, I haven't been flirting with you. You've been paying me to cut your hair. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. And he's like, but the way you touch my scalp. Yeah. What does he say at one point? He goes, I find your forward feminist ways very exciting. Terrifying. And like Terrifying. right next to the other, it was like, my mom taught me that no means yes. I enjoy your feminism. Despite that, <laughs> will you marry me? Yeah. And remember, this guy has major Ed Kemper vibes. Made, yes. I wrote in my notes at this point. At some point in the scene, I wrote, this would be a funny scene if it wasn't how women get murdered like significant amounts of the yes. time. Yes. 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 He tells her that they... They have been commanded to multiply and replenish the earth. Yeah. Which is such a Mormon line. You hear it yeah. all the time. But in this context, it's extra creepy. Yeah. He he snaps and he yells that. And then he's like, all right. Well, you know what? I might be leaving. This offer is off the table in three. Two. You're not doing it? Two. <laughs> one, one and a half is how I go. To, fuck. And he just yeah. leaves. And then and he the, leaves. Can we dissect this exit? He closes the flowers in the door. And when he does that, he yelled, fetch. Fetch! Which like, what's the lineup? So this movie came out in 2002 or 2003. Mm-hmm. When was Mean Girls? It was eight later than that, right? This wasn't oh, a Mean this Girls movie was trying to make fetch happen. This, <laughs> I have always said Mean Girls is based on Pride and Prejudice, a Latter-day comedy. <laughs> and Kara's the only happen. one brave enough to say it. <laughs> Tina Fey pulling out headphones, super angry. <laughs> right? yeah. No, she's angry because we're on to her. That's, That's right. She's yeah. Angry. She's afraid. Yeah. And then last thing before the scene's over, Jack just shows up to like, to, to reestablish himself in the movie. And he's like, who wants to go on a date with me? All of you still in this film. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll find out what happens, but first we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with act two of Waterboarding Jane Austen's eternal soul. Helen, listen to me. We can't let Julie's party be the event of the season. Brad will like literally forget our names. Totally. We have only one choice. We have to cut the power. It's giving total blackout. Here, use these garden shears. <laughs> um, Helen, are you okay? Hey, Amanda, what's up? Wow. Wow, what happened? We're doing, like, shenanigans. By touching the main power to somebody's house with with metal? Is that metal? Yes. Okay, well, I'm 
pretty sure your friend's dead. No, she'll be okay. Slay. Will, will she? Maybe. I'm dead. Are you? Oh, no, she's literally dead. Brat Summer. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and we're back. When we left off, the obnoxious pretty boy Jack showed up to invite Elizabeth to a different scene. And now we're there at a so-called Indian restaurant, but we're in <laughs> Provo, Utah. So that's the context. Oh, Heath, as someone about to head to Salt Lake City and bask in its delicious avocado toast, a spice-free Indian cuisine, which I am 1,000% sure this is, is something I look forward to with a plum. Okay, well, their example in the scene of, you know, adventurous ethnic food is chicken tikka masala. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, by the way, is Scottish. Yeah, it's an, it was invented in the UK by a <laughs> yeah. Bangladeshi chef who is there hoping to let white people think they were eating Indian food. That's why that dish exists. And it's delicious. Yeah, it was in Glasgow. Also, did you guys see the waiter that they showed for like a half a second at the end of the scene? Mm -hmm. yeah. Was it... It was vaguely racist, right? Extremely. With a Sikh gentleman? Just making, okay, just yeah. making sure. I mean, look, I'm not saying that a Sikh person can't work at an Indian restaurant. Obviously, Sikh people work a variety of jobs. What I am saying is that this movie definitely thought that Turban meant Indian. Yeah, well, they were yeah. they were not going for Sikh there. They were going for snake charmer. <laughs> yes, yes. Like exactly. that's what was happening there. This is insensitive Halloween yes, costume. That's yes. what they were aiming for. Th this was the restaurant's weird uniform, like cheeseburger in paradise with the grass skirts, but like this hat that they yeah. gave you. It's no, that's a turban, and this is Sikh. Ah, just, it's the uniform. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's time for us to get Jack's version of the backstory with Darcy intrigue. He was in love with Darcy's sister, but Darcy broke it off because he's middle class. And then he tried to bribe him not to see her again, but it didn't work. And then he immediately tries to tongue kiss her. Yeah, he never really explains why. Like, it's weird. He's like, Darcy didn't want me to marry his... No, he said date his sister. Yes. Darcy offered me a bribe. And then it still didn't work out. He didn't take the bribe. No. And then the sister broke up with him anyway. Right. Cool. Yeah. And then he attempts to uh, slam his face into her face. At this point, I wrote in my notes, if your seduction technique doubles for Muay Thai boxing, not a great sign. Not a great sign. Yeah. I like how you say Muay Thai. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we weren't all in the fight pits, Kara. Muay Thai. We aren't all covered in the names of the men we killed in the ring. I'm making a website. This part's weird to me, though, because clearly... I'm making a website right now. Up until this point, Elizabeth is clearly into Jack, right? Like that's right. what they're painting. Like she's super hot for Jack. She's thinking about Jack all the time. Jack goes in to kiss her. She like, she goes, slow down, cowboy. And I'm like, I don't get, is she asexual? Like, what are they going for here? Because she's, not that she's required to, of course not, but like she wants to kiss him, right? Like that's. She's a proper Mormon lady. She's a proper Mormon girl. Mormons kiss. Some kiss. But first they, you know, duck you like Neo in the Matrix for a little I bit. See. And I then see. eventually, maybe the, like a lady. Maybe the laxic daisical come and go you. Mormons where you come from, Kara. Yeah, but down the, there in Texas. Exactly. The only, <laughs> the only thing that proper Mormons do is soak and jump on the bed. <laughs> did you notice, though, that earlier when they were at the tennis game, they were drinking red can Coke? I did notice that. Mm -hmm. yes. Why? That's not Mormon. It's not. It's it, should have been, it should have been caffeine-free Coke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they not have, mm -hmm. like, caffeine-free in the regular can just for Utah? No, it's like it's like a gold or yeah, silver. Yeah, it's a weird gold okay. can color. Thing. Yeah. The soda machines are that color, too, to let you know you're not accidentally going to get yeah. caffeined. It's very funny. Very funny. But yeah, they have that scene. Now we get a, another title card. I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but this movie uses Jane Austen quotes as the title cards in between scenes. But as the movie goes on, it is less and less like quotes you would recognize from Pride and Prejudice and more and more things like two weeks later or mm -hmm. four o'clock. <laughs> uh, but it's early in the movie. So we get those who do not complain are never pitied. And she's complaining about the plot of the movie to her boss. It's at the early bookstore. in the movie still at this point. Jesus <laughs> Christ. 
Uh, yeah, she's she's bitching about pressure to marry to her old man boss. It's very uncomfortable. And he has a big yeah. hole in his sweater. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Just desperately trying not to talk about a 19-year-old sex life as he runs his shop. I like that the old man boss is, says nothing. She's yep. talking yeah. the whole time about weird, <laughs> awkward, inappropriate stuff. And he says nothing. And you just see in his eyes being like, you hear me not responding to anything. Stop talking to me about that stuff. It's not okay. Oh, is this the part where she's talking about a bunch of like losers that she's gone on dates with and it shows a yes! montage? The failed dating montage. Yeah. And she's supposed to be 19, 20. And these are like all 45 year old men. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. These these are supposed to be uh, pursuers, but they are, are more her dad's friends. Uh, let's see. We have the guy who only read comic books, the guy who couldn't read, too tall. I wrote in my notes, Heath, are you okay? Oh. Okay. And then the last one is just... A, no, I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> not okay. And then the last guy is just a, a guy with a ventriloquist dummy. I'm not sure if you noticed this, but I love that you called them her pursuiters. Yeah, her pursuiters. <laughs> exactly. It's good. I like that. Yeah. I write like toddlers talk. You know, the adorable like malapropisms that toddlers do. That's how I write the English language at the age of 37. But is that where suitors comes from? It might have the same root. I don't know. Maybe. They pursued her. Maybe I'm too pursued good at the her. English language Maybe. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jack is here. No, but Darcy shows up, right? Yeah, pop scare. Yeah, Darcy does a pop scare and he has something he'd like to talk to her about, which means that the movie is over. It's weird too because he just shows up and he looks like hey, what's going on? But she's been talking this whole time about how she hates Darcy and loves Jack and all men are trash. Yeah. But then he's like, hey, what's up? And you're like, you heard all of that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like so what is supposed to happen, they're smushing two scenes together here to make them both nonsensical. So there are two scenes in Pride and Prejudice, a.k.a. Bridget Jones's Diary. Okay. The first scene is Darcy has been rooted at a party earlier. So Elizabeth is talking shit about Darcy and then she does like, a, he's right behind me, isn't he? And then he bites her head off like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, I remember that in Bridget Jones's diary. In Bridget yeah. Jones's diary, mm -hmm. the work of literature. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The second scene is the scene where he tries to ask Elizabeth out later in the movie and is kind of fumbly and awkward about it. And he says, I find you strangely attractive. Something that they repeated in this film. True. Right? But that was supposed to be like a much bigger deal in Pride and Prejudice. Like, I find you strangely attractive is like, what's that pussy smell like in Regency England? So oh. it's supposed to be a much bigger deal in the scene. But they've combined those two scenes, which makes them both nonsense. Because she's like, I fucking hate Darcy. And then he's like, oh, I'm here. Anyways, I find you strangely attractive. <laughs> right. Right. Like if I walked up on someone and they were talking about how much they hate me of fear that I have every time I walk up to anybody, Aww. I would not then ask them out. Oh, well, you don't have the confidence of a mediocre white man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, all I could yes, notice I in do, this Karen. scene. Yes, I fucking do. <laughs> the You're on thing. our podcast. <laughs> I'm big to differ. <laughs> so did the paycheck. <laughs> All I could notice in this scene, all I could notice, the only thing was that all the books on the bookshelf were fucking placed horizontally. It was insane. They were. It was the craziest system I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so stressful. And I think, so the writer, again, did ridiculous like stage direction here, but didn't have any specificity to it. It just said like, do something funny and clumsy, the guy who plays Darcy. And yeah. he was like, oh, all right, I'll pick up books off the shelf and then throw them up in the air like an infomercial. <laughs> and he's like, clumsy, charming, please date yeah. me. And she's like, no. Like a Victorian infomercial uh, who's seen a mouse. <laughs> like our sponge is hard to wash with. <laughs> <laughs> and he's actually a good actor. Though I'd say the one good actor is the guy who plays Darcy. He is. He's probably the strongest actor. Let me make an argument. Let me make an argument. Let me throw this at you. He's in like real movies. He was in Death on the Nile recently. Great movie. Great film. Let me throw this at you. If your performance is handsoming, it's easier than not. Also, yeah, his whole personality was a British accent. Having his face was his I, th job. I think him and- He's not handsome. I, okay, can we take a second? He's not handsome. I disagree. He was a beautiful man. What are you talking about? Kara, this is almost as bad as the time you said that pugs weren't the greatest thing ever to happen. <laughs> this is You've crossed us for the last time. This is bad. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. He 
He's just British. You guys are you guys He's are having the same is, is he hot commercial. Or is he British? He has exactly. You guys are falling hair. into the trap. Welcome yeah. to being a woman it smells in like, like the modern suckle, dating scene. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Is he cute or does he just have tattoos? Is he cute or does he just have a British accent? He has the accent. That counts for points. That's real. You are talking about two things Heath and I fall for hard, (laughs) Kara Santa Maria. So you are alone right now. You are all alone on this podcast. This is a one-woman show. All right. So now it's time for another title card. This is the dullest topic. Might be rendered interesting by the skill of the speaker. (laughs) Which is a great intro for church, which is about to happen. Yeah. So Collins is going to give a sermon on marriage, which is the scariest thing in the film. Basically, his point is, if a guy proposes, you should say yes. And if you don't, when he murders you, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Collins is revealing himself as a literal incel at this point. And he is pulling a full Harrison Butker. And if you don't know who that is, that's the NFL player whose mom is a literal medical physicist who did that whole women should stay home and be wives and and have kids, you know, during the college commencement God, address. That ruled. That that's basically what what Collins, aka Ed Kemper, is doing. Exactly. And this is the first of her fantasy montages, uh, which I was very confused by. So Elizabeth doesn't have doodly doos in Pride and Prejudice, and neither does Bridget Jones. Bridget Jones's Diary, the much more important work. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, at this point, the movie Pride and Prejudice, a latter day comedy. <laughs> introduces that Elizabeth will occasionally have fantasies. So she fantasizes about throwing her Book of Mormon at Collins's face and everyone applauds for her. Um, It's her hymnal. Thank you. Oh, her hymnal. Of yes. Course. You don't have just your Book of Mormon. At, well, I don't know. Do, but... no, you're embarrassing yourself. Yeah, yeah, come exactly. on. And, and most people's Book of Mormons are like soft, soft, Ooh. covered. Pleathered. Pleathered. Yeah, they're pleathered with their name yes. emblazoned. Good for throwing at people because that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And they come in like a little twofer, like a little leather case that has the Book of Mormon and the Bible like next Ooh. to each other. The that was very much a hymnal, which lives in the pew. Do the fancy people have like an extra holster for like Pearl of Great Price or whatever? Yeah. Oh, no, Pearl of Great Price and Doctrine and Covenants are printed at the end of the Book of Mormon. It's all oh, in Oh, it's one. in the book. Okay. Yeah, it's in the same book. I'm embarrassing myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah stop embarrassing yourself. <laughs> also, did you notice the way that the bishop, when he finally is like, dude, you need to get down, you're embarrassing yourself. He's like, next up, we have... Miss Vasquez and I vomited in my mouth. Yeah. Jane Argentina is here. Jane <laughs> Argentina. She's brought quasi d- dillas for the. Yeah. Group. And then afterwards, she's going to take us to Taco Bell and pronounce our orders for us. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the title cards at this point are getting weak. This is a fortnight later. Mm. Jane is very sad because Charlie is gone. And the only reason I include this scene is because Charlie is in America searching for ancient Native American burial grounds. And I wrote, if they're the ones I think you're searching for, Charlie, good luck. <laughs> oh, for sure. This was like Ruins of Nephi. Yes, absolutely. Came across 100%. on the sub. <laughs> the wooden yeah. tight as a dish onto a dish submarine. Oh, I didn't get that. That's, yeah, that's rough. And he sent her a Dear Jane letter. You got to love that. A a Dear Jane. uh, A literal Dear Jane. Kara, this is a modern hip movie. He sent her a Dear Jane email. Email, yes, that's true. (laughs) Electronic mail, it's the newest thing. Do you know that there's a Britney Spears song called Email My Heart? Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I did not know. Probably from the same air. (laughs) So now we're going to cut to the day of her big business lunch with the literary agent. What business lunch, you ask? I don't fucking know. At some point in this haberdashery of scenes, a literary agent wrote that they would like to discuss her book with her. Great. Now you're all cut up and now it's time for her to have lunch. We see her drive there and run out of gas and fix her car with a wrench. She fixes the lack of gas (laughs) with a wrench. (laughs) With the socket Mm -hmm. wrench. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then she arrives. Yeah. And and so she heads to this lunch. She throws her keys to to Eli wearing a blazer (laughs) as the valet. (laughs) <laughs> and she does this thing that I love movies do, right? So movies always cue you that a restaurant is fancy because the maitre d' is a piece of shit. Yeah, and he's always gay too. He's like a snobby gay man. Yeah, exactly. Always. They always call <laughs> yeah. him gay. And he's always like, as though rich people want someone to be like, get the fuck out of my restaurant. <laughs> They do though. Yeah. That character's <laughs> coat is gay. Therefore, this is a problematic movie. <laughs> yeah, see? Keith, you could be this job. Heckler narrator guy. When when they start doing it, I think it's fantastic. We need him everywhere. But yeah, so now... I don't think you read this book by Jane Austen. Therefore, this is also a bad movie. I, I never read it. I read it. 
dozens. Oh, you're plural. talking about dozens. Yes, so. Not this movie, not this book, Kara. <laughs> People are going to be quizzing me at live shows. I read Bridget Jones' Diary, the book based on the movie. It's Thank awesome. You. Dozens yes. of times. I, re- I read the novelization of Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole movie. Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jurassic Park. It's great. He's very tall. Anyways, who should show up as a literary agent? Why? It's Darcy. Yes. He's the D in D&G Publishing. This I don't get. Okay, can we take a minute? We I know we don't have much time. Well, maybe we have enough we time. We have all the time. Kara. Good, okay. Kara, we have all the time in the world. I need Noah's to listening to this it. right now, desperately saying out loud in his office, no, you fucking don't make a joke on my podcast. <laughs> but he's not here this week because I assume they're ripping out his teeth or he had a heart attack again. So this, this D, Darcy, in D&G Publishing... Mm-hmm. He co-owns a publishing house. He's clearly 45, but playing a 19-year-old, right? I think he's supposed to be a little bit older. Like He's definitely supposed to be post-college. Yeah. 23-year-old. And I think Elizabeth mm-hmm. says she's 26 at one point. She's in college and 26, according to the oh, movie. Oh, maybe she went on a mission. Getting a doctor. Yeah. Oh, she's going to be a uh, mission, yeah. dead people dentist. She might have gone on a mission. Okay. Oh. Yeah, they do. But not all women do that. Kara's still in school. So, no, I'm not. She's getting her MRS, <laughs> PhD or whatever. Whoa, Kara called out by Heath then, right? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing clever to say in response to that. Morgan? Um, yeah, Morgan? <laughs> Morgan? Please replay the part where Kara please, said the thing that I was please, calling back to. Please cut that. Just Avenger. put it right here. <laughs> Just delete all of it. <laughs> Noah, we're very sorry. Anyways. So... Wow. He co-owns a publishing house. Kara literally got us back into the podcast with a <laughs> with a thigh slap whelp. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> better be hitting the old yeah. Dusty. Do you guys want to do some comedy or did you want Noah to come to your houses and kill you? I just Sometimes I'm afraid that my retorts to certain things won't be funny. They'll just be mean. It's true. So, you did so once just, tell Heath that he was a bag of flesh worth nothing and that you would celebrate his suicide with Garner's Okay, but that was so mean and funny. It was a good roast. It yeah. was a great That's roast. Clearly That's... an Eliism. That does not sound very Kara. I, I think you dreamed Maria. that. Com says otherwise. <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> it actually Eli doesn't Lester. anymore. So now I'm understanding too that he's the D in D and G Publishing because his last name is Darcy, which I didn't know because they didn't tell us that. Right. Because then I was like, he keeps talking about his partner Janice, and I'm like, is Janice the G? <laughs> right. Janice with a G. <laughs> really confused. Kara says GIF instead of GIF. I do. Yeah. So yeah, I was lost. So you would be fine with it. Exactly. Yeah. So he tells her then, he 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 talks about how her story's really interesting and he thinks she's a great writer, but it needs some work. And in giving her some, quote, constructive feedback, he tells her the story is incoherent. Okay. okay this, so is this, is, this is amazing. The movie writer accidentally wrote a scene with a publisher roasting the movie script that was being written by the writer at the time. It's the best. It's so funny because what very obviously happened is this person who can't write was like, well, what kind of feedback do I get when people read my writing? They tell me my writing is incoherent and it's filled with spelling mistakes. <laughs> Napoleonic techno fantasy is not a thing. Yeah. Therefore, you're stupid. There you go. Exactly. And so this person was like, well, Even though he wants to write her book, he would probably say the things that all of those script readers have said to me about this movie. To be fair, that's what I say about your running commentary. (laughs) Well, (laughs) and I I have always taken it as the flirting that it is, Kara. (laughs) Okay. You're so much gooder. (laughs) (laughs) So much gooder. This whole podcast has been our meet cute, Kara San Maria. (laughs) Eli finds you strangely attractive. He would like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, it's painful. <laughs> but my my favorite is her response to that is she goes, because he's like, oh, there's some spelling mistakes. And her response is, I've already done 10 drafts. Yeah. Like she just wanted to be raw dog published exactly the way it is. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then she gets mad at him and pretends like she's going to throw a drink in his face. And I can't help but feel like, what are the stakes in this movie? Like, has this character ever dealt with anything of consequence in her life ever? No, absolutely not. She has an offer to be published and he tells her that an experienced editor needs to edit her book and she gets like 
offended by that. Yeah. So offended. Again, the, the real writer of the movie has had that happen many times about the Napoleonic <laughs> fantasy or whatever and is mad about this. So the character here is like, oh, you're, is this about me turning you down for a date earlier? And oh, yeah. the, the publisher guy, he's like, Darcy's like, no, that's just a... It's just a coincidence. It's a it's like a bad plot point that needs editing. That's what that is. Don't worry about no. it. Also, I'm offering to publish the book. I'm right. just telling you it needs editing. Yeah. Why would I bring you here and offer to publish the book as revenge for you <laughs> saying no to dating me? <laughs> but yeah, she fantasizes about throwing water at him. Kara, have you ever gotten to throw water at someone? Uh, I probably have gotten to, but I didn't. You never uh, did like the martini glass to the face thing? Uh, I don't drink. Still, you could just get a martini you could get for there. I could just right, throw somebody one. else's martini glass. Explain and that it's a throwing else's? martini. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I've never Kara, found Kara, I want you to know, next time we eat together, you could throw a drink at Heath. It'll be super fun. <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to volunteer <laughs> yeah. myself. All right, there you go. There you go. It's all working out. <laughs> Perfect. We'll put it on TikTok. All right, so now we get a being sad about the last scene montage. Darcy wrote her an email that says, uh, sorry, I say mean stuff when people are around. And I wrote in my note, the no illusion story. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where he explains the real story with Jack, that Jack married his sister in Las Vegas and then ran up a big bill in her name. I was like, this is so silly. And then I Googled Mormons getting married in Vegas. And I got to say, I... I am loving the loopholeism of Mormonism the oh, yeah. more I learn about well, it's it. It's like every religion. They love their loopholes. Yeah, this is apparently a very common thing is that teens who just can't wait to have sex will go to Vegas, get married at a drive through like wedding chapel, and then go fucking their parents aren't mad about it? Because that's the rules. Because that's the rules? Fox? Yeah, they belly checked it. You can't yeah. complain. Check. Although, to be fair, like most parents would be mad about it because they want their kids to get married in the temple. Ooh, yeah. See, that's what I would think. I would be like, no, you can't cheat and do a drive through marriage Are there thing. not Mormon drive through temples in Vegas? No. <laughs> no, I don't we think so. We should start one of those. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's our big chance. Hey, we're going there anyways. We're an hour away by plane. And so what, what ultimately happens in, in Darcy's version of the story? Jack marries Darcy's sister in Vegas, has a gambling addiction, like basically steals a bunch of her money. Mm -hmm. And then what, how does it end? Well, she goes to divorce him and then it turns out he was already married to another girl. So she didn't oh, even have right, to. right, right. And they, they play that up like it's a bad thing, which is kind of funny given the religion. Yes. I like that they show one little poker moment about his gambling <laughs> addiction. He, he proudly lays down like a pair of sixes and loses because that's, you know, he's got a gambling addiction. Yeah. But apparently he's at like a high stakes five card draw table in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, the, you know, those famous go fish tables that they have uh, <laughs> yeah. that they have on every corner in, in Las Vegas. Baseball, nines and threes are wild. Yeah, fours, you can buy a card. I'm, I'm confused still about Jack and his motives. <laughs> so I'm trying to empathize here with Jack. Jack is married already. Why isn't he just with that wife? Ma already ran up all her credit cards. He needs okay. a new girl to run the credit cards up on. And then he just keeps coming back to Salt Lake? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. He just keeps... Why does he keep going for Mormon girls? Because everybody wants to get married. Because everyone wants to get oh, married. And he's just got this and thing. And they have that Mormon gold. Where he, why does he marry them in order to run up there? Oh, because like then he has access to Well, because account. otherwise it would be improper. Right. <laughs> That's very confusing. Yeah. This is also where we resolve the Charlie and Jane thing. Remember that Charlie broke up with Jane. Well, it turns out the only reason he broke up with Jane is because he saw Collins proposing to her in a montage from earlier in the movie. It was uh, all a misunderstanding, the plot of this film. The whole plot of this film. Yeah. And, to be, and to be clear, if you're confused, yes, Ed Kemper slash Collins proposed to Jane after Ed Kemper slash Collins proposed to Elizabeth. And he does this systematically to all the women you know, his, in the movie. His character is just like sprinting around the movie proposing for <laughs> yeah. most of his existence. Yeah, he will propose to all females within the film. <laughs> yes. But yes. eventually he nails it. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's time for another title card. This is where they're starting to get weak. This is uh, One Morning About a Week After. <laughs> I said Jane that. Austen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is supposed to be, this is what I imagine a misogynist incapable of empathy imagines women's unhappiness to be. 
right? Oh no, we we have we have weekends like this. You do have weekends like this. Hundred well, percent. I retract. <laughs> My, you go Pizza into an, an ice cream, cream vendor. Yeah, this is I not just wrote, women. People have yeah. experiences like this, Sometimes Eli. you need a sad day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just a thing we do. For me, it's okay. a happy day. But yeah, everybody does it I was going to say, this is Heath's just lifestyle. Also, I know I'm cutting to the next scene, but one of the... We'll get there. But one of the sisters gives these two girls who are having pizza and ice cream sad day a bunch of shit for buying tampons. Like, so they're also on their periods. Yes. Like, it's okay to just like lay about sometimes when you feel unwell. Yeah. And have pizza and ice cream. And have pizza and ice cream. And speaking of that scene, that is where the mean girls are going to come in. And and yes, she does say, how dare you buy tampons? She wrote, I wrote in my notes, men love women who don't menstruate. Menopause is so hot. <laughs> But to be fair, I don't menstruate and I have not gone through menopause. It's the best of both worlds. Exactly. It's it the is. best of all it's worlds. Absolutely well awesome. This yeah. movie was setting you up for success, Sarah Santa Maria. I've <laughs> also, always said that. We did skip over one thing, which I think is important. We will come to it again later, but we get to hear Charlie's business venture. We see yes. an infomercial. Oh, this is very important. He sells Mozart to dogs. Mm -hmm. Like he has these you know, wow, that's what I call music. <laughs> CDs, I guess they're, yeah, they have CDs then. And it's like this high pitch beep, boop, 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 but of these, you know, like famous classical pieces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Marriage of Figaro is just the same, but the rest of them are like super <laughs> yeah, right. the rest yeah. is yeah. different. And it's supposed to make d dogs like change their behavior. The whole time I was watching this killer was asleep next to me. No budging, not affected at all. Not at all. Did any of your dogs, did you, did the pug notice? No. Oh. Madge didn't, didn't like this? Didn't care for this part yeah. of the film. I yeah. tried to show her the pug. Okay, but Austin the pug cleans up some of the pizza and ice cream, which he was does the best. clean up some of the pizza in this scene. Yeah, which is great. Very cute. Yeah, you wrote pug like seventeen times. I did. My notes are literally <laughs> just pug. Yeah, pug. All caps. Pug. All caps. Because <laughs> I love pugs. <laughs> So now we get another title card. Health, good humor, and cheerfulness began to reappear. The arc of the plot began to arc in my movie now. Go. Yeah. So what is the parallel here with Bridget Jones and this and the actual book? Because if she's writing that, like, is there like fat shaming in the book too? No, not oh, not okay. in the fat I mean, in all of culture in yeah, a way. Yeah. I'm sure if I say no, someone's going to be like, actually, and I'm going to be like, yeah, no, that's true. But uh, yeah, this like getting over it montage where they're bouncing on yoga balls. And and by the know, way, they all weigh like 99 pounds. Yeah, it's, it's a bummer. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a bummer. But, they, but they did the crime of eating ice cream. So now they need to do the insane torture we call women's exercise in yep. American culture. Yep. And then, of course, she goes to start working on her book again, which we notice by her popping the hard floppy disk of her book into the disk drive that she attaches to her portable MacBook. I wrote in my notes, he wrote as he turned to dust because he was so old. Yeah, yeah, this was the part where I realized so this book, this movie, like I said, came out in like 2002. I finished high school in 01. I finished college in 03. Four. So like, I'm probably about the same age as these actors. I looked it up. I'm not. They're much older because they were playing young. Yeah. <laughs> but like my undergrad honors thesis was saved on a diskette, not, not a floppy. Like you remember Obviously, the hard diskette? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. Where you would flip the metal part, whether you were rewriting or not. Of course, yeah. The three and a halfers. Jill of the yes. Jungle. Yes. And it That's corrupted. Oh, and it was the no. saddest moment. No! I actually paid a college freshman to retype the whole thing because all I had was a paper copy and I needed to make edits. Mm -hmm. So I paid somebody to retype the whole thing and it was Great. It was a lot. <laughs> I'm glad that worked out. Yeah. <laughs> For you? Oh, college. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so also during this little montage of, you know, her cheerfulness beginning to reappear, we see her getting good grades in... 26 year old college too. She gets a paper handed back to her. The paper's title is Great Female Characters and she got an A. So, all right. This movie writer gave herself an A at writing the script that she wrote for this movie. Yes. Ooh, was the movie written by a woman? Uh, two women, yes. Oh, okay. No! Yeah, no. Two, two women wrote this. No, Heath, no! Two Mormon women. Two, Promise? I would assume Mormon women wrote this, yeah. yes. No, oh, that's so sad. Now I'm sad. We're having a sad time. <laughs> now we're having a sad time. Patriarchy hurts Yeah, men, too. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the, the other thing is when she gets this grade, she gets offered a position as a TA in London, 
which is important to the plot. So now we get a quick scene where she breaks to her roommate that she's going to be a TA. She'll only be gone for three months, but Spanish girl's very, very sad. She doesn't want her to go. Oh, oh, you skipped something. Collins. Collins is now into ner- nerd girl. Oh, yes. He shows up with flowers for nerdy girl yeah. in this montage. Yes. Yeah. For Mary, right? Yes, for Mary. Mary. So then that, that yeah. plot point has resolved itself. <laughs> And yeah, she's going to be a TA at the thing. And so they go for hiking and ice cream to celebrate. Yeah, Yeah. she's packing up. And then Jane's like, I don't want you to go. Let's go hiking and eat ice cream together because that's what women do. That's what's going to happen now. I did write, oh, I want to go on a hike now. (laughs) Great (laughs) female characters in literature, A+. But that's the thing. This was written by women. Like it's yes, it's written by misogynistic women with internalized misogynism. Misogynism? Yeah. That's not a word. Misogynism? Misogyny. Misogyny. misogyny thank you. Women with internalized misogyny because they I don't were love that born. I have mansplained the word misogyny to you <laughs> just now. <laughs> I uh, it's called really misogyny. Love that. I love that so much. <laughs> we'll cut the you'll we'll cut the part where you called her a big dumb dummy, Heath. Don't worry, we'll cut that out of the I, but we remember, okay, so Morgan. two women with a lot of internalized misogyny because they were born and raised into the Mormon church and they have a lot of self-hatred and they, you know, have a lot of self-loathing and they they really do believe that like to get married to a man is the only thing that makes life worth living but they're also still women so they are writing female characters like women but the opposite of jane austen the much better feminist from no i know she's a better feminist but they're all women and that's, that's what i'm saying you guys keep being like that's not how women and i'm like no yeah it is like they are still writing women as women in this movie kara i don't think you understand how women work is my next <laughs> thank thought. you and for I finally have to being keep brave <laughs> That to you for being this. brave enough to say it, Keith. <laughs> okay. First, See, she's this wrong is about why, pugs. This is why I come on this fucking show, right? <laughs> this is I'm doing a public fucking service. service. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it's best if we take a quick break. Thank you. Probably. But first, <gasps> let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will the white lady and the white guy finally get together? Will the other white lady and the other <laughs> white guy finally get together? What about nerd lady? Find out nothing because the rest of all of our notes are entirely sheep hug when we return <laughs> for the illiterate conclusion of Pride and Prejudice, a Latter day comedy. I don't know, Mr. Wickham. I like Jack, but there's something about Darcy I just can't get out of my head. If you could just put the books back onto the shelves. I mean, yes, Jack is handsome with hands like an octopus, but what should one expect from a boy in this day and age? This is actually pretty inappropriate to be talking about with your employer, just so you know. But but Darcy is so mean. Where does he get off being so rude and sullen? Hey, I have a cat named Mittens. Got him one of those towers this week with the lasers on it. You're right, Mr. Wickham. I just need to tell them how I feel. Ah, oh, love. Young love. Thank you. Hey, man, can I buy a book? Shit, how long have you been there? A while. Sorry. and we're back when we left off jane and elizabeth were heading up a mountain to maybe pass the bechdel test in their movie based on the jane austen novel full of female characters and they fail immediately that test because charlie shows up on a motorcycle he might as well be yelling i'm a man in the movie here i am here i am ruined your test (laughs) the man you've been waiting for while you bided your time with other women (laughs) Oh, and this is the point where I got distracted during the last commercial break because I was buying light bulbs on Amazon. So I kind of missed. I wondered why there were so many (laughs) lumens in your notes here, Kara. All right, this is all making sense. Did you get the blue or the yellow? I got, oh, you can change the color temperature. Nice. (laughs) So Charlie drives off with Jane. She goes to work on her book, Out in Nature. Yeah, she's MacBooking in the grass. Yes, as God intended, as yep. the young Cara Santa Maria did with her thesis, exactly. I do love working and sleeping outside. I'll give you that. Because she passes out, which is like I do when I'm hanging out outside. I like sleeping <laughs> on the ground. What can I say? I like that they show her entire laptop screen for a second, and all of the text is grammar check under. <laughs> 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 Red Squiggle Man has come for everything she's written. Eli's used to that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the funny parts. He, uh, he writes the squiggles under the funniest jokes, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay. And then uh, she takes a, a grammar nap, I think, and then mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, has a, a nightmare about 
getting hunted by an evil horseman in a rainstorm? No, no, no. She's in, she's that's her her book. Yeah, she's having a fantasy of her book. Yeah, she's just dreaming about her book. The Napoleonic techno uh, oh, romance. Oh, that, oh, this actually makes perfect sense. Withdrawn. Right, because yeah. they're like in period costume. Yes, exactly. But then she wakes up and she has to march through the rain. Yeah, she wakes up in the pouring rain. Yeah. Like, and it's pitch dark. Like, to be honest, and she looks scared and I'd be pretty scared too. I think I'd be able to hike back down to my car. I don't think I'd be so lost that I couldn't find my car. But like, it is kind of scary to go out during the day and not bring nighttime equipment on a hike. Especially if you're going to fall asleep. Yeah. Like she didn't have a headlamp or anything. I've, there have been a couple of times where I went out during the day and I only brought my sunglasses <laughs> and didn't realize that I was going to be out past the time when the sunset and then had to drive home without my normal person glasses. Mm. That's a little bit scary. Hmm. Have you ever had to do that? No, you guys have perfect vision. I, I was going to say, yeah. Kara, the the things that we would need to do beginning <laughs> with go on a hike for, <laughs> for us to relate to that sentence are, uh, we're stopping right here at the pass. Well, for anybody who's listening who's dealt with this before, you end up... Oh, uh, if Noah they, was on this episode, he'd be like, absolutely. Yeah, he knows what I'm talking about. He you likes. end up doing this game where whether you're driving or walking in the woods, where you're sort of wearing your sunglasses and periodically just lifting them. And so between the two, you can see well enough. <laughs> you, Does that make sense? You can like it's combine light enough the to like see. prescription of the sunglasses, the of the sunglasses. but then <laughs> the taking away the shade of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. It adds up to seeing. Interesting. <laughs> sort of. Well enough to get home. Kara, I'm going to hook you up with some sweet, sweet transition lenses for Christmas <laughs> this year. No cookie basket for you this year. You're getting transition lenses. Nice. The highest of fashion. Or a monocle. Ooh! <laughs> a transitions monocle. Two monocles. Two transition monocles. <laughs> a diacle. Pocket friendly. Yeah, exactly. Keep a lookout for it. <laughs> but yeah, she makes her way to the cabin and just walks in because why the fuck not? Yeah, what a batshit thing to do. There's clearly someone home because there's a raging fire in the living room. Mm -hmm. And she just starts poking around their shit. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, okay, the furniture is definitely going to start to sing her a welcome song any second now. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't you know it? It's Darcy's cabin. Mm, what are the odds? <laughs> and he discovers her. This plot is clunky, therefore I don't <laughs> like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he discovers her and they have a little um, like conversation. Yeah, she like breaks a bunch of his shit for some reason accidentally. Oh yeah, she breaks something <laughs> by accident like the moment she walks in. And but the, but this is where they make up, right? Oh right. And and what about Sister Anna? Can yes. I just say I love Sister Anna. Yeah, Sister Anna's fantastic. She's like really sweet and supportive. Mm -hmm. I think Elizabeth should should hook up with her instead. I the two authors of this movie agree with you. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a vibe. Okay. There's definitely yeah, a vibe. This is a fantasy scenario of like uh -huh. finding in the rain a cabin with like this British guy that you have a crush on and his and, delightful and his sister. sister. Yeah. yeah. And realizing, oh, that's who you have the crush on. I feel like that's for a very specific Google search. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, I'm into it. I'm into it. Look, look at this. Thank He's coming you. out strong. Wow, <laughs> Kara. <laughs> well, uh, you have no idea how much of an ally you were to Heath and right? Just so <laughs> important. Starting to panic. <laughs> I told you I wasn't into that Darcy. Oh, I'm into this yeah. Darcy. There you go. Euphemia Anna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's her full name. <laughs> Hell yeah. And Fitzwilliam Darcy. Yes, yep. exactly. They're they're over dinner. They're they're revealing their We both have the exact same very specific search history about you. <laughs> <laughs> that is established. Darcy. I don't know why I made all that stuff up for the websites. There's so much to work with. <laughs> I don't think heathenwrites.com still goes to the article about legalizing incest, but I hope it does. Oh, no, Jesus. <laughs> You're saying it's worse with others? Yeah. Wow. Huh. Everyone Why? gets a website, Kara. Everyone gets a website. I have like 10 websites. You have the most. It's true. You have <laughs> okay. the most. Okay, Kara, on three, we're going to name the next word in that very specific search that we both have. One, two, three. Fondue. <laughs> Yikes. I, that's where I thought you were going with this. But I was about to be like, hey, Heath, join me over here in the private Zoom room. Really Are you scared. asking our friend to announce their kinks on Is the it air? Movie? It's fondue in the movie. And I, I was like, you, okay, I'm on board. I saw down the road where you were going. I wasn't sure our friend Kara saw. I did not see where you And going. I was calling the police. Yeah, I was like, 
Do I say credit karma? I don't know. <laughs> Light bulbs. Okay. All right. There was also a lot of poop probiotics commercials yeah. being shown to me. That's true. We did, by the way, keep a running tally of the commercials, which we we saved you, the dear listener. Yes. From having to quite, hear that. <laughs> quite a few. All of mine, because uh, Amazon Freebie, I think it's called, knows I have a kid. So all of them are like... <laughs> Are you ruining your kid by not doing this ABC Mouse website or whatever? Yes. Oh, it's yes, fascinating. You are. Okay, so it, it has you pegged as father mm-hmm. who it needs to guilt into buying more shit. Correct. It has you, Heath, pegged as single dude, right? Who wants dentistry, but also it actually really does. Because the other two <laughs> the other two things I saw, one was like a probably a stepdad thing. It was like roofing people who like revitalize your roof, like the enamel on teeth, which was weird. Like the graphic was the same. And the third thing was like wrist control university MMA. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yes. And mine was all credit karma, poop probiotics and dog food or cat food. So it definitely had me pegged as like a relatively successful middle-aged woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they like, were like, your stomach hurts and you love a dog. And you were yeah. like, my stomach does hurt and I do love a dog. <laughs> but yeah, what Heath was hinting at, instead of sexually harassing our co-host, it's so important Not you understand that. this, podcast yes, listener. Yes, instead of asking our, our co-host out of nowhere what her kinks were, he was referring to the next scene where they have an impromptu fondue party. Sure he was. Which is the fantasy of the writers of this movie for sure. Let me throw this out there. And Heath and Wright. And me. And <laughs> if you're being honest, fondue, right? Come on. I'm not mad at it. I don't think you can do an impromptu fondue party. They take planning. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, maybe they were planning a fondue party for two and she just joined them. That's not possible. They were. You don't have enough for three if you plan a fondue party for two. Well, they had to ration. That's right. Wouldn't have been enough cheese to go around. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> what a fun brother-sister duo. Right? That's right. <laughs> Just having fun, do. Do you guys have... Si- I know Heath doesn't have a sibling. Do you have a sibling, Karen? I do. We've never fondued. Could you guys fondue? No, we would not fondue. My sister and I could fondue oh. the hell out of a fondue. My sister oh, I would love that. fucking nice. love a fondue. Are I don't you think kidding? we'd ever fondue. Oh, she'd be so excited. I actually wrote, when is the last time you had fondue? It's been a while. Hmm. Heath, I bet you've had fondue the way you know how sometimes Pretty, when you're playing yeah. a board game, it's like the person who goes first is the one who last traveled to Abifa or whatever. Yeah. If, if I'm the just like scrambling is... to put away fondue because I think you could see it somehow. Right <laughs> Heath has fondue for breakfast. And it's getting a little too personal. Every morning. It's getting too personal for Heath. We don't yeah. want to know what he does with that fondue. No, I think, yeah, we did, uh, me and Ann did some fondue uh, New Year's. And Heath, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Thank you. It's too much. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. You and your you and your fucking fondue. You this and is, your fucking fondue. Every episode. We cut it most episodes. This episode, we're keeping it in. It's private, you guys. Yeah, it's, it's private. Pri- Ooh. <laughs> maybe, maybe Karen does fondue in a very different way. He does. does. How are you losing the joke on I just said, I don't know. <laughs> This is the I mean, joke. look, I know that Heath is dunking Stay his balls in that cheese and going to the hospital. I've been there to the hospital. He literally I've already signed forgot the search forms. history joke. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and then who should show up? Intense woman with eyes and pearls. Charlie. Caroline, Caroline. Caroline that's right. <laughs> that was not describing Everyone Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's the dog music guy. Yeah, nor will he be here at all. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so Caroline is there to introduce one more misunderstanding into the movie. And look, podcast listener, I know for the Jane Austen fans, you're like, but that's actually what happened in the book. But the book is long and this movie (laughs) is not. So the fact that we're having the 97th misunderstanding where nobody will ask a clarifying goddamn question and end the movie truly upsetting. They also never, like, there's this thing they do in movies, because this is even before the thing which we'll talk about, the whatever, misunderstanding. There's this thing people do in movies and TV shows all the time where, like, the guy and the girl are clearly having a good time. They're vibing. Somebody else shows up and they're like, no, I'll take you home. And they're like, I guess I should go home. And it's like, why are you more concerned with being polite to the shitty person than you are with, like, enjoying yourself with the guy? (laughs) It's a great question. So yeah, she feels guilted into letting Pearl necklace. Ooh, no, let's not call her that. (laughs) Charlotte. Charlotte. All right, next thing after fondue, (laughs) Pearl necklace. No, Right, like what is happening? She's more concerned. So she she allows Charlotte to drive her 
to her car. Right. And in doing so, Charlotte reveals to her that she's engaged to Darcy, which is a lie. Which is a lie. Correct. Caroline, though, not Charlotte. Fuck. You made me say Charlie, too? I did. Uh, <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> it's my Jedi powers. Intense eyes and pearls. Yeah. Caroline, intense eyes and pearls, tells Elizabeth, protagonist, that she is engaged to, that that Caroline is engaged to to Darcy. I didn't get that they were like, maybe engaged or maybe not here, Caroline and Darcy. So I thought she just like showed up from like a neighboring mountain cabin to like fucking borrow sugar and cause tension. I think she did. So I was so confused. She did just show up to cause tension. So she did come from a neighboring mountain cabin? I don't know, but they're not maybe engaged. She's just weirdly into him. Oh, okay. Later I was like, oh, she was there because she's weirdly into him and was yeah, hanging out with true. him and sister. Right? That's that's the vibe, Eli, of, of Pride and Prejudice, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah. Okay. Like, he's not into her, but she's into him. Love polygons. Fascinating. <laughs> In the book, she's like who he's supposed to marry because she's rich and he's rich, but... It's, oh, right, because they were like this, social Yes, exactly. They're like yeah, social. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now we get another title card. Next to being married, a girl likes to be crossed in love a little now and then, which I actually really like as a quote from Pride and Prejudice, but it has nothing to do (laughs) with this movie at this point. (laughs) We're basically just sort of catching up on all the characters, right? Mary is dating Collins, so they're no longer obligated to be in the movie, but this (laughs) is building to the giant this is building to the conclusion of the movie. So Peon, sidekick girl, the one who electrocuted herself, she knows that Lydia is somewhere secret. Well, yeah, because she's Lydia's little sister. Yeah. Kitty, right. But they tickle torture her, <laughs> and, which, I, Kara, again, you've taught us so much about women and the secret nope, lives no, of them. No, this is just the misogyny. Wait, let me <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that they just, you don't ever tickle your girlfriends? No. Just to get a little... It's not a thing. Information? <laughs> no. No pillow fights either. Damn it. Not, not in your bras. Nothing turns out to be the reality I want it to be. I know. But yeah, Lydia is off to marry Jack Wickham in Vegas. And so now... Wait, can we take a second with this? This is a big turn. Yeah. People are having a hard time following the names. We need to explain who these people are. Okay. Jack is Matt Gates. Yes. Jack is the love interest <laughs> who was supposed to be the good Octopus guy. Octopus the gambling yes. addict. Secretly yes. turned out to be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And Lydia is the bangs girl who's been awful, who's been trying to get with the other one, Charlie. Who has a poke. Who has a pug. Yeah. So she's like, whatever. If I can't steal Charlie from Argentinian Jane, I'll steal Jack <laughs> from the protagonist. Yeah. You following? Yes. So okay. now they're headed to Vegas and now the movie is about them needing to drive to Vegas <laughs> okay. I love to that. stop them. This scene in the movie was the same thing as Kara just now. It was like, hold on, I have to do a scene <laughs> to right. explain You're confused. the dumb loose ends in my movie. <laughs> Our movie yes. is bad. Yes, yes. They've got to go stop the wedding. So we cut to Las Vegas. Wait, things happen on the way to Las Vegas. What happens? Well, they all ride in the VW Bug and doesn't it break down? It does. And yeah. also... We cut to Jack and Lydia on their way in a, what do you call it? A Jeep with no canvas. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever done the drive to Vegas? It's really hot. Kara, you're you're talking to just wildly uh, more rugged humans in your imagination (laughs) than in real life. (laughs) It's very, very hot. Me and Eli off-road in our Wrangler all the time. (laughs) It's, it does not make sense to not have air conditioning on the drive to Vegas. If Heath and I walk into a restaurant that's not air conditioned, we fucking leave. We leave. <laughs> yeah, that's it doesn't what I'm matter saying. if there's a reservation. We're just like, oh, nope, this place is hot. We're not going to hear. We're mean to the Mater D. That's it's true. Just, we flip it. It doesn't make sense. Nobody we would tell ride them in they an don't open deserve Jeep. our presence. And then we knock over their roll ups as we yeah. walk out. Yeah. You know what's up. They Thank don't. You. Also, the pug is there later. Where the fuck is the pug on the way to Vegas? It's true. I was angry about this. Is it in her purse? Union union rules. They couldn't get him for the day. <laughs> they didn't want to pay for the full day. They shot, they shot him all at once like Nick Nolte. <laughs> so now we cut to Las Vegas. Yes, thank you. This is all very important. And what I, what I loved about this is, one, the climax of the film is rescuing a friend we barely met. But the other thing that's really funny is this is a Mormon movie, so they can't show anything in Vegas. So all the shots of Vegas are literally them just running the camera past the screen. Yeah. They're just like, trust us, Vegas has lights. Because all the signs in Vegas are like, Uncle fucks Chuck's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're so right. 
Also, while they're on that trip, they call Darcy. Darcy is also running to the rescue. Will he arrive at almost exactly the same time as them? Yes, but don't worry. It doesn't matter. Isn't he supposed to be closer? Yeah, he's supposed to be two hours closer, but they will arrive at the same time. Yeah, because he's on a business trip. Yes. But he's in a fast, fancy car and they're in the VW, so he beats them. Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. And he, he has a Nokia phone. Do you yeah. guys notice that? <laughs> yeah. He does. It's yeah. snake during that business. Battery meeting. of that phone? Still fine. Still 100%. <laughs> yeah. Still ready to go for when this movie was made. So we get some more montages and now we're going to cut to the wacky Vegas Chapel for some antics. Oh, but they left Charlie behind. They did. Yeah, they left they Charlie behind. The gas he literally yeah. mattered so little to this movie. They were like, oh, I think if he's in this scene, it's confusing because all our white men are identical. Are you so Charlotte just... or Caroline or yeah, Charlie? Exactly. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if You're Charlie forgotten. puts on a pearl necklace, this movie will suck into itself <laughs> in some form of inception. <laughs> so uh, we're going to leave him at a gas station. They make him run to the wedding. He apparently runs he to runs Vegas. He gets there. He Vegas. runs to Vegas as fast <laughs> as Darcy, who is two hours closer, drives, which is the same speed as it takes them to go from, I assume, Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. yeah. Good times. But this is the wacky minister. He's supposed to be doing a Scottish? Oh, I love him. Oh. He might be my favorite character in the movie. Interesting. <laughs> he's in a permanent <laughs> fight with his mother. Yes. And he's about to marry them, but just as he does, Darcy tackles him. Or at least we're supposed to assume he has a tackle because the actors were not up to the fight choreography of a tackle. So they gently use red eyeliner on his nose and lips, and then we sew them post tackle. Yeah, we see Jack bite his arm at yeah. one point, which is an interesting choice. Funny I also fight. think I think it's interesting that the the pastor, the usher, whatever he is. He looks at Jack and he goes, I recognize you. You've been here before, but that's okay. And then the wife or engaged, whatever. What's her name? Lydia. She just shrugs. Yeah, she's like, she's eh. like I don't yeah. need to ask any clarifying No follow-ups. <laughs> I mean, she's in this movie where clarifying questions are forbidden. So yes. I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> so after the fight, Jack is being arrested for bigamy. Apparently that's something that like beat cops do. <laughs> in, in Utah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're in Vegas, but second biggest Mormon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now... Darcy, I, I just wrote my notes. Darcy has the most makeupy blood on him possible. Mm -hmm. It might as well be eyeliner. It's like a Jackson Pollock blood spatter. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is where they also, this is where Elizabeth is going to clarify that there's been a miscommunication, right? No, she's going to unclarify. Yeah, that. she's going to exactly. unclarify. <laughs> right. Because he says, he's like, I want to talk to you. And she says, I already know. And then they just look at each other and walk away. Right. Because if they said another <laughs> sentence, the movie would be over. I think you're talking no past each other. Therefore, this is this dumb. movie is this bad. Is yes. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you in the history of things that have happened to you? No. No. You you're like, like, we need to ask talk. one more question. Ever. <laughs> I already know. Let's be sure we're talking about the same thing here. <laughs> Look, we might not ride in open Range Rovers, but I'll tell you the two things that Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick do do, and it's over communicating. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, Eli starts talking and I do the shh and I put the one finger over That's his lips. True. That's but true. then Except I'm like, no, 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 but actually say what you're talking about. That's true. But to be fair, uh, mostly when we talk, we aren't talking about our relationship. We're just talking about my terrible ideas for our company. <laughs> <laughs> Neither, Neither here nor there. there. Exactly. You have to listen to all the podcasts to get that podcast listener. So he realizes there's been a miscommunication and he's going to run after her. But if he's going to do that, he's going to need Charlie to use his dog music, <laughs> which we teased earlier in the movie doesn't work on Dobermans. Oh, yeah. It, oh, really? It, it, it makes Dobermans in particular not calm, but instead extra vicious. Oh, it has yeah. the opposite effect on Dobermans. Because it's, it's Wagner. <laughs> And they don't like Wagner, the Dobermann Apparently, community. My dog also did not react to this music at all. No, not a Doberman. There you Something they could have tested. Yeah. So, yeah, the dogs attack the cops, which gives him enough to go away. So we get, and I will say this, I think this is cinema's first run after the girl while handcuffed. Yeah, Darcy is literally, why is Darcy handcuffed, by the way? Because he beat up. He got into the uh, fight. Jack. Yeah, so Jack fight. is under arrest for bigamy and gambling, they said. Mm -hmm. For yes. bigamy and gambling. That's and Darcy a, yeah. is under arrest for assault. <laughs> for assault, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I also, it's super funny to point out that like, 
you now realize watching this scene why they've never had a cuffed scene, why they always break out of their cuffs, because it looks so silly. He looks so like stupid. he's advertising a used car salesman. It's bad. <laughs> the arms just flying akimbo behind him. So he's running after them. They're in the car already trying to leave. Yes. And he's, by the way, he thinks, she thinks that he knows, that she knows that he's engaged to creepy eyes pearls. Yes. And but then he realizes, understanding. yeah, he realizes because somebody tells him whatever. Oh, you guys are engaged. Congrats. And he's like, we're not engaged. What the fuck? So that, then he runs after them. And I just have to point out this entire driving scene where they're driving home. They have Lydia, who has just discovered the man who proposed to her is a serial bigamist with a plan to bankrupt her. And no one is doing anything to comfort her. They are no, sitting because, in complete silence. Because they did their duty. She's awful. They rescued right. her. She should be grateful. <laughs> exactly. The pug is providing all the emotional exactly. care that she deserves. But again, distance doesn't matter in this movie. So Darcy manages to step in front of their car. <laughs> yeah. He ran a shortcut through Vegas <laughs> and got in front of them. I actually kind of love this scene because he gets in front of the car and she stops just in time to not hit them. And then she sort of like taps <laughs> And the accelerator yeah. and does hit him. Like me in a baby carriage, exactly right. <laughs> so yeah, she knocks him over with the car, but then they make up and it's all solved with a Mormon smooch. And you know they're going to end up together because they actually do kiss. They make out on the street with blood all over his face. Yeah, I mean, it's Vegas, so not the weirdest thing anyone <laughs> walking standard. by has yeah. seen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. <laughs> Among the more pleasant scenes in Las Vegas that night. So now we get the Breakfast Club clothes, not of our podcast, but of this movie. Uh, Lydia, who we remember had the pug and was abandoned at the altar by the bigamist who wanted to steal her money. Mm -hmm. uh, she wrote a new book about doing things for yourself instead of men. Yeah, and she did not marry. She literally said, Lydia did not marry. Instead, she wrote a book because those things are mutually Those are exclusive. the choices. And Kara, can I say, you wrote a book. Can't marry. You know, can't marry. Nope. You are legally not allowed to get married. <laughs> the book stands up and goes, I object if she tries. It's, yep. you know, it's a yep. whole thing. Lydia ended up being the main character, according to Jane Austen. We <laughs> fucked Right, <it> exactly. <laughs> The younger sister slash sidekick becomes a cheerleader. Collins and Mary got married and went on the trip together. Charlie. So the uh, the Pearls girl married an old guy. Oh, Caroline. Yeah, right. you keep calling and her Charlie. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a zinger moment, but it's actually really horrifying. Yeah, it's gross. Because it's like, he lived way longer than she hoped and she had to fuck him thrice. And we're just like, oh, this <laughs> Creepy. kind of upsetting. But he was a billionaire. Yeah, exactly. So. Charlie and Spanish Girl ended up okay. Fucking Jack escaped from prison. That was weird. Yeah. Yeah. And he ran away to Brazil. And now he does daytime TV is what they say. And I was like, this feels so specific, Very specific about somebody yeah. in the life of the writer for sure. <laughs> Pulled straight from the novel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then... Oh, by the way, and of course, Elizabeth Finnis is that she's writing a book of this movie. And I wrote in my notes, I hate it. I hate it so yeah. much. <laughs> they're in London now. Like, I guess she never left. I think they're at the Jane Austen house. Yeah. And like, it's the weirdest turn because this movie doesn't understand chronology. Because at the end of all of that, she's like, now I just need to introduce Darcy to my parents. And I'm like, wait, what? That other girl already had five kids. Yeah, what happened? One <laughs> right. of them, you laid out 18 years of time. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been dating for 18 years? Why are you the same age? She was a TA for 18 years. And then did I miss? Darcy showed up. Parents still Happy haven't ending. met Darcy. Again. A necromancer. More. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Yep. And uh, I haven't read it, but I presume very similar to the end of the book. So before we close it out, what piece of classic literature should they make into a more movie next? Dante's Inferno. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Just it, Troilus and Cressida spinning around and around a caffeinated beverage. You guys, it would get Solid. real weird. It would get real weird. Dante's Inferno gets real weird. I know. Now add Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Support. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Pride and Prejudice, a Latter-day comedy. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie. Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, we'll be wrapping up Mormon Movie Month. Oh, I know. With a treat that we missed in theaters but could not wait to tackle. 
400 AD, in a forgotten time of ancient America, a lone Hebraic fugitive must preserve the history of his fallen nation while being hunted by a ruthless tyrant. But rescuing the king's abused mistress could awaken a warrior's past. We'll be watching The Oath live in Salt Lake City. Ooh. That's Mormon? Oh, That's... yeah. It's the Alma story? The Nephi story? Any what of that them? shit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, they were doing stuff in 400 AD and then just like, you know, fast forward, fast forward, uh, upstate New York. Yep. Exactly. Right. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 467 to a merciful close. Huge thanks, as always, to Kara for joining us. Mm hmm. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Karen Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. Nine-tenths of the characters in this film went on to join an Exmo support group. <laughs> fake Scottish priest in Vegas and his wife, the actors, went on to write Napoleon Dynamite in real life. Huh. I see, I told you. Yeah. There was something funny about him. Yeah, there that actor Like he was vibing. And yeah. his wife co-wrote Napoleon Dynamite. Like he a, had a Napoleon years Dynamite later. vibes. There you go. Love it. All of these characters had clumsy, painful sex for the rest of their lives. Oof. One, two, three, four. Four. Five. Five. Sorry, I forgot to say four. No worries. <laughs> do you want to do We're it again or is that time. good? We'll do okay. it one more, one, more, one more time. That's how you know you've truly joined the cast is when yeah. you forget the five <laughs> it's count. It's important. That's... Just to really rock him to his core. Is this the riveting premium content that you offer your patrons? <laughs> sure is now. <laughs> I'm sure they're thrilled. <laughs> All right. Here we go with in bold and underlined. Interstitial one. Mm -hmm. Agree. I could Every seriously morning. live on charcuterie board like that. Same. Just all the time. It has all the food groups. Yeah, it's all of them. Pickles. Delicious. I love a colon sausage. cancer included. A little gherkin. I call them cornichons. Cornichons. Yes. That was the word I was mm -hmm. trying to say. Actually. Wow. <laughs> God. Are you so fucking embarrassed right now? I am. You I'm asshole. so mad. <laughs> That I didn't say it right. Look like an idiot. He's crying, <laughs> crying face down I'll be back on the bed. In a while Anne rubs his back. I'm sure she knew that you knew the word corner shots. <laughs> no. No. Said Gurkin. They have the jar with the thing Different that pulls pickle. him up. I know about it. Oh, yeah. That's the fancy jar. I like that jar. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply.